This is part two of my lecture on diagnostic accuracy where I'm going to explain prevalence and accuracy. In diagnostic testing we have a patient who presents with some symptoms of disease and so we want to ask the question do they have this particular disease? In order to try and answer that question we perform a suitable diagnostic test and as we said before if we get a negative result it means no they don't have the disease and a positive result yes they do have the disease. But unfortunately the result may not always be right. That's what we're trying to investigate with uh, measuring diagnostic accuracy. So we have to make some assumptions. First of all let's assume that patients either have the disease or they don't have the disease. So the disease is, is present or absent. There's no halfway house and no varying severity of the disease. They don't just have a little bit of the disease or a severe case of the disease. It's either clear cut, yes or no. That's obviously a little bit simpler than reality, but we have to start with some simplifying assumptions. We also have to assume that there is some gold standard test available. This is a perfect test that unambiguously tells us whether the disease is present or absent. The gold standard test is always right, where, whereas our test might be fallible. So our test though has to give a dichotomous result. Uh, that is, is a positive or negative result, no equivocal halfway results. Again, that's not quite realistic, but we'll understand how to deal with that later on. So we have a positive or negative result, it's just that that result may not always be right. It's worth noting that our test must offer some advantage over the gold standard test. For example, it must be either easier to perform, or maybe cheaper to perform, or less invasive to the patient, or maybe all of those. If it doesn't have an advantage, then we'd be better off using the gold standard test instead, because we know the gold standard test is always right, so we would use it if it was either easy or cheap or not invasive. So our test has to benefit uh, from one of those advantages to make up for the fact that it's not always right. So the possible outcomes of our test would be either a true positive result where the test result is positive and the patient really does have the disease so we have the answer right. We could also have a true negative result where the test result is negative and the patient definitely does not have the disease according to the gold standard test so once again we are right. But we might be wrong. We might have a false positive result where the test result is positive but actually the patient doesn't have the disease so we were wrong. Equally well we could have a false negative result where the test result is negative but the patient does have the disease so once again we were wrong. We failed to detect it. So we can tabulate those results in a table like this where we have columns representing the results of the gold standard test and rows representing the result of our test. So if the gold standard test says that disease is present and our test is positive then we have true positives. If the gold standard test says the disease is absent and our test is negative then we have a true negative result. Equally well we have false positives when the disease is absent but our test is positive and false negatives when the disease is present and our test is negative. We can add up the rows to give us true positives plus false negatives as the total positives and false negatives plus true negatives as the total negatives and we can add up columns to give true positives plus false negative which is the total with the disease present and false positives plus true negatives which is the total with the disease absent and the overall total n is the sum of all of those. So we'll see lots of these tables tabulating results in exactly the same format. Let's take a concrete example. Let's think of a disease we'll call syndrome Y. Um, it's actually a common genetic condition which affects about half the population. Now there is an accurate gold standard test which is a genetic test but it's rather slow. So in practical circumstances we find that the condition is often associated with prominent facial hair.
So actually, a quick visual test for syndrome Y is to look for a beard and take that as an indication that this patient has syndrome Y. So here are the results of a hypothetical beard test performed on 100 adults. The gold standard genetic test says either that Y is present, which for convenience we'll call men, or Y is absence, which for convenience we'll call women. Uh, the beard test gives us a positive result, in this case, say, in nine men. That is a true positive result. Uh, people who have a beard and who turn out to be men. Equally well, we get 49 true negatives. That is where the gold standard genetic test says that Y is absent, the patient is a woman, um, and the beard test uh, is negative, they don't have a beard, 49 true negatives, women without beards. But equally well, we have 41 false negatives, that is men who fail the beard test, they don't have beards, that gives us a false negative result. And, perhaps surprisingly here, we have one false positive. A woman with a beard who gives a positive result for the beard test, but who nevertheless happens to be a woman. If we add up the rows and columns, we see that we've got a total of 10 with the positive beard test, and 90 with a negative beard test. A total of 50 who turned out to be men by the gold standard test, and 50 who turned out to be women by the gold standard test. That makes an overall total of 100. So those are some numbers that we'll be examining in the next few slides um, in this hypothetical examination. First of all, let's define what we mean by prevalence. Prevalence is defined as the total number with the disease divided by the overall total N. So in this example, the total with the disease is the total in the Y present column, 50. And the overall total is in the bottom right, 100. So the prevalence, 50 over 100, is 0.5, or if you multiply that by 100 to make it a percent, it's 50%. Now it's easy to understand what we mean by prevalence. It's the fraction of patients who have the disease. It doesn't tell us anything about the test, it just tells us about the population that we're examining. So naturally, it will vary from one population to another. In this sample here, I've got a prevalence of 50 taken from the general population. 50% uh, of the general population are men, so this is a typical prevalence. But I could have sampled a different population who were mostly men, or a population where there were very few men. It doesn't tell us anything at all about the test, but it does say something useful about the sort of people that we're examining. Accuracy is another term that is often quoted in the literature. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory. If you look at it, it's defined as the true positives plus the true negatives, that is, all the true results, as a fraction of n, the total number of patients altogether. So in this case, the number of true positives plus true negatives is 9 plus 49, which is 58, as a fraction of 100. 58 over 100 is 0.58 or 58 percent. So accuracy is a fraction of the results that are correct, and that sounds a very sensible way to measure how accurate the test is. But as we'll see, it's not actually quite as good as you might hope for. Let's look at what happens if the prevalence changes. Here's a group which, instead of having 50 men and 50 women, has got many more men than women. 500 men and 50 women. So this is taken from a population which might, for example, be a football crowd where the majority happen to be men. So, uh, in this case, we find that the prevalence is 500, the number of men, over the total 550, which is 91%, a very high prevalence of men in this population.
the accuracy, the number we get right, is the true positives, 90, plus the true negatives, 49, which makes a total of 139 that we got right, over the overall total of 550, which is 25%. So our test is 25% accurate in this population. But now let's look at another population, which turns out to be mostly women. This, for example, might be a group of nurses that we sampled, who happen to be mostly female. So here, again, I've got a total of 550, but this time it's made up of 500 women and 50 men. So the prevalence of syndrome Y, the fraction of men, is 50, the number of men who have syndrome Y, divided by the overall total of 550, which is just 9%, a very low prevalence of men. The accuracy of the test now is the number we got right, true positives 9, plus true negatives 490, making a total of 499 right out of 550, which is 91%. So in this group of mostly women, we have a very high accuracy, whereas we had a rather low accuracy of only 25% in the mostly men group. That demonstrates that accuracy changes if the prevalence changes. So actually, accuracy is a rather poor indicator of how good the test is. It's easy to get an accurate test if you have a population where not many uh, patients have the disease. So uh, if the um, group is all women, then the beard test is always going to be accurate. So the accuracy changes with the prevalence of the disease. Finally, let me just say something about incidence and prevalence. Incidence is the rate of new cases of the disease as a fraction of the population studied. Rate means how much it changes with time, and it's only new cases, not existing cases. So, for example, if we're talking about diabetes, the incidence of diabetes in the UK in 2005 was four cases per year per thousand of population. That's the number of new cases diagnosed each year. On the other hand, the prevalence is the number of cases existing at any given time as a fraction of the population studied. So it's a fixed number, not a number per year, and it's the total number, not just the new ones, the existing ones. So, for example, in diabetes, the prevalence of diabetes in the UK in 2005 was 43 per thousand population. That is the cases that existed in 2005. Notice that is 10 times the incidence rate, because once a case has been diagnosed, they remain with diabetes for many years. So that illustrates that incidence is not the same as prevalence and it's prevalence that we're talking about uh, in these statistical tests. So we've learned that prevalence shows how common the disease is, and that varies from one population to another. On the other hand, accuracy is how often the test is correct. You would imagine that is a good number, but unfortunately it's a rather poor indicator of how good the test is, simply because it changes with prevalence. And that concludes part two of my talk on diagnostic accuracy.